The South African steel industry is, is fundamental to manufacturing in South Africa. It's got a proud history. The first uh, steel factory was set up in Ferenichen, the Union Steel Corporation, in 1912. And the history of steel is that uh, it's actually built this country. And if you go back in the history that steel and electricity were start, kind of started together, Eskom and Esco, actually by the mining industry, who wanted to make sure that they could control their own costs and their own inputs to be competitive. And it seems like we go full circle back to where we started. If I talk just a little bit about ArcelorMittal, but I, I talk for the steel industry, I, I think, is that we supply about 65% of the local steel required in the country, and we have about 80% of the capacity. Uh, directly, we have 40,000 jobs uh, in terms of the people who work for us uh, and in terms of the contractors who are direct for us, and downstream about 60,000 jobs that we create. So it's about 100,000 jobs purely out of ArcelorMittal, and if you add the knock-on uh, all through the steel industry, it's a, it's a lot more. ArcelorMittal also adds about 1.4% to the GDP of the country, and then the steel industry a, a lot more than that. It's our firm belief that steel is integral to the future of the country. It's our firm belief that without the steel industry, you will not have a competitive manufacturing industry, and you certainly won't be able to drive the national development plan. In terms of 2014, uh, in terms of the raw material inputs that we had, we beneficiated the raw materials to the tune of 22 billion rand in South Africa. That was our value add in terms of what we do. But let's go back to the National Development Plan because that's the fundamental to drive the manufacturing industry. So the, so the National Development Plan, which plots out to 2030, says that we need to increase GDP 2.7 times to about 5.4% per annum. We need to increase capital spend as a percentage of GDP to 30% from the current 17%. And we need to create 11 million jobs. And it's a good plan. But we're sitting in a very distressed state at the moment, not only in the entire manufacturing industry, but in the steel industry itself. The steel industry in South Africa, South Africa consumes last year about just under 5 million tons of steel, but because of the strikes. Uh, we had significant strikes, CIFSA strikes, but we also had uh, mining industry strikes. But if you equate it to 2030 and the growth plan of South Africa, South Africa's steel consumption in that growth plan says we need steel consumption of about 13 to 14 million tons in South Africa. In a country that can produce with us and everybody else about six and a half million. So massive opportunity for this industry to create jobs, create downstream beneficiation uh, and treat the raw materials of South Africa in an appropriate manner rather than export them. But the entire industry is in crisis, steel industry, and it's really tough on South Africa with a 5 million ton market. The global steel capacity is 2.2 billion tons of steel per annum. That's the steel capacity. 1.6 billion is what actually is produced, so there's an overcapacity in the market of 600 million tons. Of the 1.6 billion produced, China is half, 800 million tons. So of the entire capacity, they're half, entire production, they're half. Sub-Saharan Africa's demand for steel, Sub-Saharan, 40 million tons. Two steel producers in Africa, South Africa and Egypt, 13 million tons. Last year's exports from the Asian countries and from those other countries who exported with overcapacity was around 300 million tons of steel, making its way into various markets, including ours. There has been significant action from many, many countries, particularly in the last 12 months, but going back two and a half years, against China and against Asian countries. In 2012, there were 25 anti-dumping and countervailing cases laid against the Asian markets. In 2013-25, in 2014-31, anti-dumping. This quarter, there's been five in the first four months of the year, or first three, three months of the year. In addition to anti-dumping, there have been many, many safeguard duties that approximately 60 to 65 countries have implemented within the last year. Safeguard means put in a duty now, 
and check whether we actually have dumping going on. Because the Chinese steel industry is very important to China. In July 2005, their National Development Reform Commission wrote effectively their white paper on the steel industry. And it's heavily supported by government. It creates significant amount of jobs, so it's important. But their steel that is hitting our shores today and hitting Africa's shores, and remember South Africa has no import duty on any primary steel, 0%. The steel that hits here today from China, it's one thing to be competitive against China, it's another thing to be competitive against a subsidized product. So the research that has been done is that China's steel industry is supported firstly by preferential lending from state-owned banks, electricity below cost, raw materials below cost, export credits, so an encouragement of exports, tax rebates, refunds of property taxes, research and development subsidies, all from government. And we must remember out of their total capacity, most of it is owned by state-owned companies in China. So it's a massive, massive threat on this country and on this industry.